Oh, it's a huge, huge event and really important to move the agenda forward. I think the opportunity to have all the people in this place together and have the discussions on the table and look at the data and more importantly to figure out what action needs to be taken to actually move these programs forward is critical. Okay, why is family planning very important? It's important for so many reasons. Uh, development, health, women, children, education, environment. Every sector you can think of that's affected by development is affected by the need for family planning. Okay. Uh, what part does your, or what role does your organization play? So we support two programs here in Nigeria. One is called NURI, which is the Nigerian Urban Reproductive Health Initiative, which has supported family planning programs, integrated service delivery, advocacy, and uh, communication, demand generation in several states here in Nigeria. And we also work here with USAID programming under a project called the Health Communication Capacity. And essentially, our area of expertise is really helping on the demand front, helping people to understand what family planning is about, what they need to know, uh, helping service providers communicate well with clients, and also helping with advocacy agenda and talking to traditional and religious leaders, but working very much with state governments and other partners here on the ground to do that. Okay, what areas have you reached? What areas? Geographically? Yes. Okay. Let me see if I can get this. Uh, <laughs> so in Nuri 1, which ended just last year, we were in Kaduna, Abuja, Ibadan, and uh, Kwara, as well as Zaria and Benin. And then uh, in Nuri 2, we're focusing on Oyo State, Lagos State, and again in Kaduna State. And then under our USAID programming, we're in Aboni and two other states, and I'm not exactly sure which ones. <laughs> We're also doing some work in Kano as well as Kebi State. Okay, in terms of response, what's the rate? How have people responded? I think when people have the ability to access the services and have the information they need to make informed choice, they're stepping up. I think this is something that people want, and one of the things that we really need to do is ensure the environment enables people to get what they need, both in terms of information about family planning as well as the services being provided with better quality services. And so I think in the states where we've worked over five or six years, we've really seen dramatic change. So we know that there is a need and a desire for this out there. But there's a lot of challenges in the environment to make sure that people are able to kind of feel comfortable going for those services and that they have the right information. Okay, the theme for this uh, uh, year is uh, family planning in Nigeria, the journey so far. Yeah. Uh, how can you, like, uh, what do you think? Uh, has, have we done well? Yeah, I mean, I think, to be honest, I worked here uh, almost 30 years ago on family planning, and there was a quite a large number of years where not much was happening. But certainly, I think there's a lot of momentum now um, and so there's a lot of opportunity to build on that and the groundswell is there. And I think we just need the dialogue to happen. You know, one of the things we talk about in our program is just making family planning part of everyday conversation. So women should feel free to talk to their husbands. Husbands should talk to their wives. People should just be, feel comfortable talking about family planning. There's nothing strange or odd about it. But for some reason, we're not quite there yet. And I think that's what we need to do is get that conversation out there so it's just like getting immunization or whatever other health service you might want to find. Thank you very much, Susan. You're welcome. Yeah.